Hey guys, this is uh, Dr. Cadell um, showing you the calculations for the gas law lab. All right, so let's get started. Um, the idea in this lab is that um, you reacted hydrochloric acid with your unknown carbonate, and the carbon dioxide gas that is produced is produced in a one-to-one -one mole ratio with your unknown. Your ultimate goal is to calculate the molar mass of your unknown carbonate, which means you need to know the grams and the moles. You divide the two, you get the molar mass. Um, the grams part's easy, you weight it. And so you have the grams. This whole lab's really about getting the moles of carbon dioxide gas. Um, now, the carbon dioxide gas that's produced from the chemical reaction, as uh, you saw during the lab, um, goes through the tubing, pushes the water out of the middle container into your 600 milliliter beaker, um, and you measured the volume of that, and we're going to assume that's the volume of the gas. And we can use the ideal gas law to calculate the moles of gas that did that. However, some of that carbon dioxide was remained in the solution, and we're going to take that into account also. Um, <clears throat> so let's start out with some data. So I, this is real data. I just ran the experiment real quickly one time, got some numbers. Um, they're kind of OK. Um, we'll see how they work out. So this is my mass of, okay, so I weighed about 25 mils of hydrochloric acid, and it, for me it weighed 26.184 grams. Now you guys understand, your numbers are going to be different than mine. They're going to be different than everybody else's, right? Um, my volume of hydrochloric acid that I added, that's my final volume minus my initial volume. I measured this with the burette. Um, the mass of my unknown, 1.251 grams. Now, guys, don't try to get exactly 1.25 grams. It was just pure luck that I ended up getting real close to that. If it was 1.1, no problem. Um, the temperature of my solution right after the reaction finished, which we're assuming is the same as the temperature of the carbon dioxide gas produced, uh, for me it was 21.8 degrees Celsius. And the atmospheric pressure that I read from the barometer out in the hallway, it's 30.15 inches of mercury. Now, the vapor pressure of water at my temperature was 19.59 torr. And the way I got that, if you look at that table in the lab that I gave you, um, there is a vapor pressure for 21 degrees Celsius and a vapor pressure for 22 degrees Celsius, which is 19.83 torr. What I did is they basically took a weighted average of the two. So I took the um, vapor pressure of water at 21 degrees Celsius, and because 0 0.8 is 8 tenths of, of the way between 21 and 22, I took 0.8, this number right here, times the difference between the two vapor pressures. This is tw the vapor pressure of water at 22 Celsius. This is at 21. And this is the vapor pressure of water that I will use for my numbers. And the volume of carbon dioxide that I collected was point, um, excuse me, was 30, 337 milliliters. Um, actually, that's the volume of water, which is the same as the volume of carbon dioxide produced. Um, I'm just going to convert that to 0.337 liters when I need to. All right, so I'm going to do some conversions. Um, the atmospheric pressure that I read from the barometer in the hallway, this is converting it from inches of mercury to torr. And so I got that number. This is converting the temperature of the solution, which is the same as the temperature of the carbon dioxide, from Celsius to Kelvin. And there's that. Okay, next, I'm going to calculate the pressure of the carbon dioxide above the solution. Remember, there's carbon dioxide two places, above the solution and in the solution. This is above the solution. What this is, is this is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. This is the total pressure inside of that container, which is the same as the atmospheric pressure in Tor, minus the vapor pressure of water that I read from that table. Okay, the difference is the pressure of carbon dioxide gas in that container in the mid, um, in Tor. And so now I'm going to change that to kilopascals because I'll need that for one of my calculations. And there's that conversion. And I'm also going to need it in atmospheres for my ideal gas law calculation. And there's that conversion. OK, so this is where we, where we calculate the mole fraction of carbon dioxide in the solution. Okay, Remember, mole fraction is moles of carbon dioxide divided by the total moles. Um, and this is equation one in your lab that I gave you. Um, this equation here is an empirical equation that I got by fitting an equation, a cubic equation, to some data. Um, so you're going to need to use these numbers here. The number here, here, and here 
is the temperature of your solution, which is the same as the temperature of your carbon dioxide. For me, it was 21.8. Now, guys, yours is probably going to be different, so use a different number right there. So this number times 21.8 cubed for me, and so on. This is the vapor pressure of carbon dioxide above the solution in kilopascals. Um, this is 5,000. We'll treat the 5,000 as exact. And this is the number that I get. Yours is going to be different. That's the mole fraction of carbon dioxide in the solution. Okay, next, the moles and the mass of hydrochloric acid. The moles, I'm just going to take the volume that I added. This is from my burette readings times the molarity. Now, you wrote down in lab what the molarity of hydrochloric acid was that day. It may be, it probably will be um, different than this number. Make sure you use your number here, not mine. And that's how many moles of hydrochloric acid I got. Moles times molarity, uh, volume times molarity. And the mass is just the moles times the molar mass of hydrochloric acid. And I have this many grams of hydrochloric acid. Okay. The reason that I wanted to calculate the grams of hydrochloric acid is I also want to find the moles of water. And to do that, I need to know the grams of water. So I measured the mass of my solution in the beginning, 26.184 grams. This is how many grams of hydrochloric acid I just calculated was in there. The difference is how many grams of actual water I had in that solution. And to get the moles, I take the mass divided by the molar mass. Okay. Now, here's why we had to go through all that with the hydrochloric acid and the water and the mole fraction. So we want to know how many moles of carbon dioxide are in the solution. And that's going to be the mole fraction of carbon dioxide in solution, which is moles of carbon dioxide divided by the total moles times the total moles. Total moles would be the moles of water and moles of hydrochloric acid. It ends up in this part of the equation. We can neglect the moles of carbon dioxide and a couple other things. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> the mole fraction that we calculated for my numbers um, a couple slides ago was this number, moles of CO2 per total moles. This is the total moles in, of water and hydrochloric acid. This is moles of water we calculated. This is moles of hydrochloric acid we calculated. Add them up, multiply by mole, mole fraction, and that is how many moles of carbon dioxide are in the solution. All right. Now we're going to calculate moles of carbon dioxide gas that were up in the gas phase above the solution. This is the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Solving this for N, moles of carbon dioxide gas will be the pressure of carbon dioxide times the volume of carbon dioxide over R times the temperature of carbon dioxide. So this is why I converted the pressure of uh, the carbon dioxide to atmospheres a few slides ago. So there's the pressure in atmospheres. Um, this is the volume that I measured of water, which we assume is the same as the volume of the carbon dioxide. And this is in liters. I just moved the decimal over three places to the left. That's the gas constant R. And this is the temperature of the carbon dioxide, same as the temperature of the solution, converted to kelvins. Um, put all those in. Units all cancel. Now I know how many moles of carbon dioxide are in the gas phase. Now, where we're going with this is we want to calculate the molar mass of our unknown. And we're assuming that the moles of our unknown is the same as the moles of carbon dioxide. So we had to take into account not just the moles of carbon dioxide in the gas phase, but the moles of carbon dioxide gas that were in the solution. Um, and that's what we just did. So the total moles of carbon dioxide that were given off by the reaction of our own with hydrochloric acid was the moles of carbon dioxide gas in the gas phase, this number right here, at plus the moles of carbon dioxide that were in the solution right here. Notice this isn't a very big number, but within the number of significant figures we have here, one, two, three, four past the decimal, one, two, three, four past the decimal, it matters. This number is definitely different than this number. So we add them up. Now we know how many moles of carbon dioxide gas were given off by the reaction of our unknown with hydrochloric acid, which means we know how many moles of our unknown we had. Same number. So all we do to find the molar mass of our unknown is take the grams of our unknown. Remember, this is what I weighed in the beginning, divided by the moles, and there we go.